Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is directed by Tim Burton once again. He is back after 36 years, and so is basically everybody else. Michael Keaton returns, Winona Ryder returns, Kathleen O'Hara returns, except for, like, Alec Baldwin, the other guy, Jeffrey Jones. And I didn't know why Jeffrey Jones wasn't in this movie, and I thought maybe he was dead. Then I Googled it, and I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know about that, because that was shocking. And don't Google that. Well, I mean, actually, you can. It's it gives justification why why he wasn't in this movie but they definitely bring it back the character but they definitely go out of the way to find ways around that which is very interesting i didn't really know what to expect going into this movie usually you know legacy sequels or sequels to old movies in general are pretty hit or miss and this one was overall a hit for me was just as fun as the original. It just was a little bit more messy. What I really like about the original is that it was very concise. It was straightforward. You know, it had a cool premise. It didn't overcomplicate it. It was in, it was out, it's under about an hour and a half. It was done, it was quick. This movie's a little bit longer, but it definitely feels longer than it actually is. I would say this movie feels like it's two hours, even though it's an hour 44, because this has all, like this entire movie, it was just subplot, 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 subplot. None of the subplots were bad or uninteresting. It just felt like it was an overstuffed movie overall. And when you see that there's three people on the story, this film, it felt like maybe it was just a tug of war of ideas because it feels like there's about three main storylines here. And obviously, you know, films have pulled off before in the past where it's, you know, multiple storylines and they all come together at the end. But it never came together in the end where this movie where it feels necessary to have done this for a Beetlejuice sequel because at the end of the day, it's just Beetlejuice. It's not meant to be that complex. You know, it's fun, light. You know, you, we have these zany, weird ideas that only Tim Burton can come up with. And I understand that. But, you know, when you have so many storylines, you can say, oh, it just embraces the weirdness of this. But at the end of the day, it kind of feels pointless for having this many storylines. The movie overall doesn't feel pointless, but it definitely doesn't feel necessarily uh, focused. And my other big issue with this movie, and yes... And when I say the filmmaking, I don't necessarily mean Tim Burton. I mean, maybe it is a little bit on him because we, we see a lot of cool Tim Burton stuff. We get the cool inventive lights, the, the afterlife. We get insanely wild production design. But there's a lot of moments in this movie where I couldn't help but feel that I was watching a streaming movie pushed to uh, theaters. It's unfortunate because in when I say that, I think it's mostly the cinematography of this movie. A lot of it was some boring shots. I mean, some of the composition here had me going like, what? I saw this in IMAX and I like that this movie took up the entire IMAX screen, but sometimes I felt like the framing wasn't for IMAX because I saw some of the framing and I was like, what were they thinking? You know, it, and I guess when you see it on such a big screen, it just makes it even more so, which makes me felt feel like it was even more meant for streaming just because some of this framing on a big screen just didn't hold up while I could see it holding up on a smaller screen. Just things like that throughout the movie didn't necessarily feel very theatrical to me. I mean, of course that we have, you know, Michael Keaton, Jenna, Jenna Ortega, you know, all these big name stars in this movie. It definitely feels it makes it feel a little bit more theatrical we got. But when it comes to the pure things like the framing, the editing, you know, kind of the bare basics of it, it didn't necessarily feel theatrical. And that's maybe my biggest issue with the movie outside of the messiness. But at the end of the day, it's a very entertaining movie. I think this movie is a lot like the second Deadpool and Wolverine with this year. A movie that's very entertaining throughout. I think it's going to make a lot of money. It, it's just kind of messy. And it, I think it's funny how I feel like that's what the audiences are showing up to right now. And people say like, oh, the movie star doesn't exist. And I uh, partly agree with that. I think it's just now people are showing up for IP solely for IP. And if it's IP is entertaining, they will gladly eat it up. One of the more impressive things about this movie to me um, in fact, I would say the most impressive thing about this movie that might be a little underlooked is um, how good Michael Keaton is as Beetlejuice. And yes, he, some people might say, well, he's just doing more of the same thing. But I want to emphasize that he's doing the same thing 36 years later. This guy is 72 and he has the same vibrancy in this role as he did in his 30s. That's insane. He felt like he just time traveled back to the 80s and just played this character again. And I cannot understand how impressive that is to just instantly have that character just inside you and waiting this entire time when he probably thought he would never make a sequel to this movie. I think that's incredibly impressive. And I cannot praise Michael Keaton enough just as he just showed up for this movie, just understood the assignment. And it's very impressive. And I could not be more proud of Michael Keaton for just completely preserving a character like that. 
And I think he did a better job in this movie than he did The Flash, in all honesty. I actually didn't score this movie beforehand. Usually I do have a complex rating system in my head of how I'm going to score stuff. And I have it pre-made for the review, but usually I know it beforehand. I actually started recording this view, review and had no idea what score I'm going to give it. I'm going to do my algorithm because I don't feel right. Because what I do for my algorithm is I rate things on a scale of 1 through 10 for each category, and then I average them out. So overall enjoyment slash investment is the first one I do, and I'm going to give overall enjoyment slash investment 7.5. Directing, Tim Burton had his zaniness, but he lacked in some technical elements. So I'm going to give directing another, well, I'll give it a 7.3. The acting in this movie, like I said, I can I cannot praise Michael Keaton enough, and honestly, Michael Keaton is pushing me to give it an 8. Character slash emotion, too much crap is going on with the characters in this movie. It's a little overstuffed. Some characters needed to go. While Michael Keaton is always entertaining, I'll give it a 6.5. Script is the weakest aspect of this film. I'm going to give it a 5. Pacing, the movie goes by fast, but it also feels like it's longer than it actually is. So I'm going to give it a 6. Editing, I think it was another thing that kind of lacked with the filmmaking. And so I'm going to give that a 5.5 because it wasn't as bad as, as bad as the script. Cinematography, visuals, that's what I, I, I kind of don't like that. I blended these together because the cinematography itself wasn't great, but the visuals are always like eye popping because of the production design. So I'll do a middle ground. I'll do a 5.7. VFX, there really wasn't any that was like, wow. Um, but there wasn't any that looked bad. And there's like a lot of animatronics in this movie or like a lot of just makeup here. And so I'm going to give VFX a 7.5. And for genre, for a family film, it's perfectly fine. It, it's a little boundary pushing, but Beetlejuice has always been that way. So I'll give for the genre, I'll give this another 7.5. So when I add all these together and divide it by 10, a 6.7. But... I'm able to adjust this as I please. I can go up three, I can go down three. So we have a 67, which means I can give this movie from a 64 to a 70. And so that's where I'm going to, you know, I'm gonna go on the high end because of the entertainment value. I'm gonna give Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice a seven out of 10. I'll be nice this time around. So yeah, comment down below what you guys thought of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Like I said, it's mighty fun, but kind of also mighty messy. So yeah, anyways, like, share, subscribe and stuff like that and adios.